the main problem is about getting the target population denominator data because the typical uh, indicator to use when you compare across facilities in a district is about how you are performing related to various health programs like immunization, uh, ANC, etc. And in order to do that, you need uh, to have a target population and you need to have, of course, also numerated it. And we have various problems uh, to actually find out how uh, to do this uh, target uh, population. What to do, for example, uh, in, in Rwanda is that since, since uh, the catchment areas uh, are not following uh, directly the numerator areas for, for the population census uh, in the district and for the facilities, then they have to put the data, I mean, the population data, the target data in using their Excel. So here we find, need to find a way to actually populate uh, DHIS2 with estimated uh, catchment population. And what has been suggested uh, is to use alternative methods uh, in uh, cases like this also, like using ANC first visit as a relatively good uh, uh, sample of, of, uh, of for, for, for uh, the, the target populations. Another uh, approach, which uh, actually it was uh, it was used in South Africa a long time back, and also in Togo, is to have head counts for the HMIS reporting from the facilities, and distribute uh, the population in the district based on the weight of of of, uh, of this head count and how big per percentage they have of. Uh, each facility have of the total. So that there are different alternative methods. And we can just uh, show this uh, example from, from uh, uh, Mozambique where, where they use uh, this uh, uh, scorecard for coverage uh, of, of immunization coverage uh, uh, by facility in, in the, at the district uh, data use meeting. And what was the problem in getting uh, that into the DHIS2? And why did they use the Excel instead of generated from the database? The problem was that uh, the data was not in uh, the DHIS because in, in Mozambique, uh, uh, they are not really uh, agreeing totally on, on what, is the, what is the population data in the districts, etc. So, what they do is then that the district uh, district office uh, in each district just make up, not make up, as, uh, estimate uh, population, target population for each facility and distribute it. So that is then done locally. And, and also they do it in a, in a special way. They are using the, the target uh, number and not the total number of the target population. So that's also a complication that that, that uh, makes it uh, a bit difficult to, to do it automatically. But how that is solved will, uh, will uh, or being solved, that's something that uh, Seferino will tell, tell us. So this was just a, a brief introduction to the problem of uh, estimating and the target population in, uh, at the local level in the communities and in the facilities uh, in the district health system. So yeah, over to, to the next one. Thanks. I'll Thanks, stop Pierre. sharing. Yeah, and then Kofi, you can start. Okay. Um, 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 um. Uh oh, I'm not seeing my presentation screen. Just hold on a minute, let me use, okay.
uh, having some challenges uh, finding back my screen. Okay, there is it. Okay. Yep. Are you seeing my screen? Yeah, we are. It's not in presentation mode, but uh, we're seeing your screen. Okay. Hi, everyone. If you, if you um, click present in the top right hand corner, okay, it'll okay, be full in screen the then. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Kofi. You're welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to share with you um, the presentation designed by the um, East, West, and Central Africa team. And uh, we're going to try to to, um, to deep into what um, Jordan just said um, concerning Togo and Mali. Um, well, that that are the outlines. We're going to provide a little bit of uh, uh, context and then um, explain how we set up the population uh, in Togo, how we um, updated uh, the uh, target population data annually. Uh, we're going to share uh, some specificity from Mali and how are the uh, what are the key challenges and way forward, and then uh, have a, a summary to conclude. And so we all know how critical is uh, population data uh, regarding decision making. As Jan said, uh, when we have some inaccuracy, it may result in efficiency, inefficiency and uh, program management, essentially regarding planning. You cannot determine what problems are priority problems. You cannot determine the right activities. You cannot allocate uh, your resources well. And then you have challenges in performance evaluation, essentially regarding setting up your targets and your indicators. And also when you conduct the researches, researches, you face some biases in your results. And so, uh, while uh, country level population data is more commonplace, we, we face challenges when it comes to sub level data uh, at district and then facility areas. So, in Togo, how do we uh, take this challenge? So, uh, we do each 10 years uh, a general census of the population and housing. So, we have conducted three of those uh, GCPH. And the last one was in uh, 2010, and it was the third one. We are currently preparing for the, um, the fourth one, and we had uh, not succeeded in doing it last year as it was planned because uh, we were facing some financial challenges and uh, COVID-19 was also there. So uh, in that GCPH, the data is structured per villages and uh, sometimes per sub villages, which we call enumeration areas. So uh, we have the head counts per villages and for, per sub villages. And then at the facility level, health facility level, each health facility has a list of the, its catchment villages. So uh, we can uh, use, easily reconstitute yes. the yes. facility data, adding up the villages of catchment yes. areas that are in that uh, facility list. So that is how we constitute at the uh, basic level uh, from the GCPH data, the, um, uh, the, the target population for each health facility and for each health program. Uh, because uh, not only for the facility, but also for the, for the programs, we do have proportions. So the- No. The, the hey, I'm discussing with you to take a hatch. We, uh, because when uh, we discuss with- uh, and Sorry, we, excuse me. That, uh, Sorry, somebody is, is dropping. Uh, a place, yep. uh, in Sorry, KG Donatin. I don't Maybe know that we're like... not yet uh, in, a, 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 not in. A... Apologies, Kofi, please continue. Okay, so we do have a headcount per villages and sub-villages, but we also have headcounts for uh, 
uh, for each uh, group ages. Uh, and we have group ages and then we have that per sex so that we can, uh, we can have the proportion, for example, of adolescent girls, we can have the population of children on the one or children on the five and also all those uh, uh, populations are estimated per group ages and per sex in the GCPH data. So uh, from this GCPH data, uh, the National Statistics Institute, we call it INSET here in Togo, made, uh, make projections for the upcoming 10 years based on natural growth rate. And then uh, those projections are made annually and you have the big do document for the 10 upcoming years. And then uh, the data from the GCPH are projected over each year. And then they make three scenario, uh, uh, low level scenario, scenario uh, middle level scenario, and then high level scenario. And at the MOH, we use uh, medium scenario each year because we don't have any indic indication to take the, the high level or the lower level. And this read population is updated each year from that projections. So we take the projection of the, uh, from the GCPH and then we update the, uh, the population of these reads. And then once the population of this reed is updated, facility catchment area population is also updated based, based on village. Uh, we have to, to notice that inside the district, slight adjustments are made if needed. So uh, they use the head counts that we make uh, uh, regularly, either during uh, pr prior to uh, LNI and distribution, mosquito nest distribution, or prior to neglected tropical diseases drug distribution, so we make some, we make uh, head counts uh, that is made by community health workers, village by village. And then we use that data to make slight adjustment inside the district so that we can make sure that we don't have uh, um, very, very, very low or very high population inside the health facilities. And uh, for Mali, the, the scenario or the process is almost the same, uh, but their last uh, GCPH was in 2009. Uh, uh, the update is due uh, each 10 years, but because of insecurity and finance gap, they have not been able to complete it. So they do the same uh, process, and uh, but they don't have um, the kind of institute of uh, National Institute of Statistics to perform that um, that um, projection, and then and they also undergo the annual update based on the population estimates. Uh, what are the key challenges uh, when you use those that kind of system? It is uh, population mobility. As I said, uh, uh, you may notice that. Uh, um, for from year to year, you have slight uh, changes in the head counts because of population mobilities. Uh, one other uh, one uh, other challenge is um, the the result, the, the final result of GCPH, uh, because of uh, financial consideration or political consideration, we may face some challenges in publishing those results. So. Uh, Generally, we take uh, over a year to collect the data, but it takes uh, one or two years to have the, the final result of that because there are a lot, a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, uh, data analysis before you got the, you get the, the final result of GCPH. The third challenge is the creation of new villages, new health facilities. So it's kind of, uh, uh, make you adjust the, the catchment area of all uh, health facilities. So you, you need some time to split uh, the village lease uh, so that you can make sure that this new 
uh, health facility have uh, catchment areas. And uh, as inside the district you have adjustment to be made, sometimes you can, uh, uh, you can come to outlier results result in certain indicators. For example, you can have uh, uh, DTP that is above hundred uh, percent or uh, some some district that our uh, facility that are complaining that their denominator is too high or is too low. So this is because of those adjustments so that uh, we need to make sure that adjustment that are made inside this street are appropriate enough. And it, we, we may face sometimes disparity in certain programs because they don't use um, uh, the, um, the official data and they, they tend to, to, to create or to estimate their own population uh, essentially when it comes to certain donors that are very uh, demanding on having very um, very narrow um, population. So uh, sometimes you can face challenges when you have to compare data across programs because you don't have um, uh, all the time the same denominators. Uh, so what can we conclude from that? And the, the first thing uh, which should take uh, is uh, periodic national census is the basic. When you have that 10 year uh, GCPH, then you have a strong basis for the next projections for the upcoming years. But when you don't have that, uh, you kind of, uh, uh, you kind of, uh, and in, in estimate and estimate and that uh, you lose accuracy. The second thing is you need a robust national reference institution to issue the projections. If you don't have that official projection, so this is the door open for everybody to create has a target population and then uh, things run in uh, many directions. The third th thing is you have to, to have um, for each facility, each health facility, you need a catchment area that is populated by a village list. When you have a village list per health facility, then your job is easier to, when it comes to adjust and to estimate. And finally, uh, you have to, to have uh, appropriate district agility to make slight adjustment within district based on a regular headcounts that we have ahead of certain interventions. Um, I'm gonna stop there and then just show you an image of what kind of, um, uh, uh, what kind of um, uh, data uh, we have each year. Uh, do you see my screen? Uh, so this is the example of um, the population uh, that has been updated uh, for uh, one of our districts. You have the, the district, this is the, uh, all those, um, all the, the facilities that we have. And then you have the, the population of 2020, the updated population of 2021, that is shared uh, uh, among the health facilities. And then you have the main group, uh, uh, main group for programs. So you have the uh, internet care, uh, API, um, you have birth, uh, uh, birth attendance, and then you have a family planning and uh, uh, mother to child uh, transmission preventing all those uh, proportions that had been estimated from the um, uh, GCPH that are applied to determine to determine the program uh, target for the year. Thank you so much for hearing me, and I'm heading over to Ellen. Ellen, I'm done. Ellen or hi, do you hear me? We can hear you. Seferino, are you there? 
Are you ready to be next? To present? Thank you so much, Coffee. It was very, very interesting. Uh, Elaine, do you have a contract with Sefrino? Looks like Elaine might have left periodically briefly, but Elaine, you should be on co host again now. You can unmute yourself. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I was I was not co-host, so I wasn't able to unmute. Um, yes, so um, thank you very much, Kofi. Um, and we'll keep the questions until the end, but if people could post questions within the chat channel um, in the meantime, and we can deal with them if we have time at the end. Um, so is Zeferino on? Hello, hello, good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Sefrino. So I will hand over to you, Sefrino, um, and you should be, have, be able to share. That's great. Um, yep. yes, That's great. Uh, I hope you can see uh, my, my slides. Uh, yes, that's fine. Th th thank you very much for this opportunity to be able to contribute to the discussion around the, 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 the denominator problem. Um, I think most, most of the issues that we have been facing here in Mozambique have been highlighted uh, by Yorn and also by Kofi. So, uh, uh, they, they, you know, we, we know uh, that the, 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 the denominator is a, the key to measure service interventions. And then uh, almost all the programs, uh, when it comes to uh, evaluating the intervention, they rely on denominators, uh, and most of them, they are, they are, they are calculated or they are, they are uh, rest, uh, um, yeah, so also the, all, all these uh, let's say the, 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 the indicators that are calculated based on that information, which is uh, they, they, they are receiving uh, those estimates from usual na national uh, boards, like uh, national statistics here, here, for example, in Mozambique, uh, the Ministry of Health received that information from the national statistics, and um, uh, sometimes in Mozambique they received it in the beginning of the year uh, through the, the HMIS unit. But we do have countries, for example, they don't they don't get that uh, on on uh, periodically, and, and then they don't even update they 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 they, they systems on time, and then. Uh, most of the outcomes the, the, when, we, when, when we come to the uh, looking at the, how the data is, the use of the data, the, 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 the effort that we put on our uh, DHIS to uh, dashboards is sometimes not, uh, it doesn't have the, the, the desired outcome because uh, when, you, when you go to the dashboard, you won't see, do you miss some indicators there, uh, visualization that are not presented. Uh, because uh, the, that the information uh, that is not as the, the users are expecting. That is the reason, for example, Jorn mentioned during the, the work that we did here in Mozambique, when we went to the facilities, we found that uh, some of them, they download data from DHS2, and then they do the calculations outside, because when they, when they get to the system, they don't find what they, 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 what they, they would like to use as the denominator to measure the services based on uh, their uh, definition, for example, of or what they consider denominator for that specific uh, area. So that is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a challenge that we, we, we face when, we, when it comes to implementation of these systems and special that has impact on the use of the data. So um, we found in, in the systems we, we, we usually uh, we often see on data sets that are created and then storing on population estimates by, by, by districts. And um, uh, ours, what we are doing as part of uh, addressing some of these uh, challenges is to uh, design uh, the, the data sets that we can store, uh, that will be used to store target populations, and uh, this by subnational, depending on. The, 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 what we were, were who, who they, they provided. For example, during the, the COVID vaccine, uh, we did have um, experience from the, the, the countries. We had to design um, the, the, the data sets that were going, there. they are storing information related to the target population for that, for this, for the campaign, for example, so that the, 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 at the national level, at the province level, this is, they are able to measure how much, 
they, 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 have, they have accomplished uh, with regard to the, what they were expecting or what was written in the, in the, in the, in the uh, COVAX plan, uh, immunization plan. Uh, it's also uh, mentioned about this, uh, the definition of these target groups and the data which is entered depending on the analysis period. The way, I, I, as I mentioned now, uh, for, the, for the EPI, we can consider we, we did define some target group, like for example, health professionals, uh, uh, people that, that are living, for example, that, that are the, the, the general public, and uh, there's people that are working for in the point of entry. All of these are, are, are target groups, and then they are, they are they, 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 we usually add them in the system uh, based on the, the analysis period. If they, they they campaign for three three weeks, three months, or six months, we have to discuss this, discuss with them and then make sure that the data is going to be entered during that period. And then so that they can use it um, uh, to, to evaluate that specific service. Of course, this is brings a lot of other discussions on how we can uh, continuously maintain, yeah? this, how we can continue and maintain, maintain the system so that, uh, uh, so that we will be able to, 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 to or at least the user will be able to always get the data that they want. So uh, this is what we, 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 we uh, uh, special we are working on, trying to see uh, how we can uh, the, 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 the keep design the system so that the, 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 the lower level they are able to uh, uh, make some uh, uh, adjustment in the system. We uh, special uh, is not specifically related to the denominator problem, but which is also uh, we can consider that a denominator. If, for example, I want to know how many health facilities I've, I've reported. So if the, the health facilities are not complete in the system, so we'll be, we won't be able to evaluate. So what we have done. Here we did develop some uh, uh, application that allows uh, what we call decentralization. It means that uh, the, the lower level they are able to suggest changes in the system. For example, adding users, adding uh, 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 adding services to specific facilities, adding new facilities. For example, what Kofi mentioned about splitting the the the, 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 the structure, like the, what, what one district that uh, where was uh, the, the, the split did, and then it created two districts. So we, it's it's possible uh, to, to 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 for the lower users or the lower administrators at the districts to suggest those changes, and then the national level, what they do is just to uh, confirm and approve that. Previously, to, it was taking long. Uh, to have those changes uh, made in the system because they, they were sending letters to, the, the, of course, even now they send letter, but while the, the letter is sent, is going through all these administrative levels, the, the request has already arrived from in, in, in the DHI system so that the, 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 the unit at the national level can take a look and then approve or even follow up those request and then see, make sure that the, 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 the system is, is, uh, or is responding what they're, 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 they're expecting. So and the other challenges about this maintaining, we did find also um, this situation where uh, in some country, like for example, in Guinea-Bissau, you find uh, each of uh, organization or, or um, unit or program maintain his own population estimates. And uh, there is also um, no, uh, they don't have a specific agreement on how to 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 um, the, the co coefficient that can be used, for example, to estimate a population for the next year. So it's not a, there's no agreement. That is something also the challenge that uh, that uh, that uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, is always bringing uh, coming. Uh, it's also posing the, the system not to to respond to to be used. Uh, to, to, to what we are expecting. Also, Kofi mentioned about the same thing when he was talking about using their outputs uh, to public to, to, to share this information as official information. In order to have, it, to have that, you need to have a kind of agreement that we are going to use the same set of, 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 of the, the, the denominator should be the same so that everyone that goes to the system is going to generate that. So this having this uh, duality or uh, differences on the the way the information is, is, is stored, the, more, the, the way the denominator is stored can bring uh, also challenges uh, that we are still uh, looking and then see how we can address those challenges. And uh, it was also mentioned about the catchment areas uh, that also brings challenge. We are talking about, we have been involved in the, in the community health information system, both in Mozambique and in Angola. We, did, we do find some challenges with the, the related what the definition of catchment area for each 
uh, of, for example, uh, uh, community health worker where they are working and how the information for them should be uh, sent. And then at the end of the when, which uh, is go, are we um, are they going to use for them uh, uh, as a basis for defining the the, uh, the denominator? And also, uh, finally. The, the issue which related to updating that the denominator um, um, uh, per periodically and per target group. And this is also one of the, 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 the challenges and uh, which we hope that with this, uh, uh, that what called the centralizations along the, 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 the lower, lower levels to suggest, even if they, they, they cannot make changes, but at least suggest that they, they, they uh, uh, changes, it will help to have this um, somehow uh, addressed. So uh, this is what uh, I have um, for the to contribute to the discussion related to the denominator problem that we all face uh, on the day-to-day -day, uh, work uh, with, the, with, the, with the countries uh, or with the that with DHS users. Thank you very much. Uh, back to you, uh, uh, Elaine. Thanks very much, um, Zefrino. Um, and um, I just wanted Arthur is on on online, but he's having difficulty with his internet connectivity. So he was suggesting that he he might try um, to just say something first. So we'll try if if Arthur can actually just talk um, um, about the issues in in Zambia. And if not, then we've got plenty of questions coming in and plenty of items for discussion. So we'll try. Arthur, I'm not sure if you can try to connect now and see if we'd be able to hear some of your um, um, experience within Zambia. Yep. Can't, we can hear um, some keyboards. Of our, oh, you're going to share the screen as well. Great. If that doesn't work, Arthur, we can we can probably listen to you. Hello, are, yes. are you hearing me? We are. Yes, yes. Elena, are you hearing hearing me? Yes, okay, we are. Fine. Um, yeah. Sorry, folks, but I'm just okay. Um, I want to talk very briefly about an experience that we've had in Zambia. I'm just um, to say we're, we're sharing. A... Your, sorry, Arthur, to interrupt there. You're sharing your screen on a a a slide on population data do you want to show the presentation from the first slide in presentation mode you seeing that now yeah not if you just click on presentation are you seeing my population data just yep we, yeah so if you if you click on presentation mode if you can or from your slideshow or down your right hand Sharing corner. Screen. Yeah, so if you just, we can see your screen, if you can just, and we can see you going through it, but we're not seeing it in presentation mode yet. So if you just go over to the right there, further right. Oh, oh, all right, move. okay. okay. <laughs> Our slideshow. Okay, if not, we can, we if can not, you are able just to go ahead. We can see it. Please talk. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Other. Yeah, just right. go. go. Okay. Yeah. So this, this is about Zamb Chinsali district in Zambia. And a year ago, just over a year ago, when we started, we had real problems with population data and hey, Arthur, we've lost you again, maybe? Every level. I mean, the district had no data because the district boundaries had been reconstituted, so we had no data for the district. And it took us like four months. I mean, 
mean, sorry, we finally got, our, which was roughly a thousand people was projected. Um, up with an organization in most countries in Africa, they seem somehow to have bought the rights to all the GIS of all the dwellings. You probably, people probably know about it. And they, uh, Sorry, Arthur, we're actually having great difficulty to hear you. Made so maybe very comprehensive maps. You can see the top right hand corner of my map. This is Chinsali district put in the position sorry arthur arthur we're having difficulty hearing you there's a there's a long um, delay maybe if you stop sharing your screen context. yeah so maybe if you just talk with it might be better Try to talk now, Arthur. We can't hear you. Have we lost Arthur completely? Maybe we are yeah. yeah. waiting for Arthur to go through some yeah. questions. Yeah. yeah, so um, let's say we, we, there's a couple of questions in the chat, but I just want to thank very much um, Dr. Kofi Siladon for the HISP um, Western Central Africa and Dr. Savrina Stavjun from Sedigitas, who looks after Mozambique as well as a number of other countries. Um, I think there's a couple of questions now that have been posted in the chat. Um, I think if we, some of those have been responded to already by Kofi and Jörn. Um, I'm not sure, um, Kofi, if you wanted to add to any of the other questions you, responses you've given. Um, I think you've looked at, should we have villages in DHIS too? Um, you're, you're saying something around your community health worker catchment areas. Do you want to expand on that, Kofi? Uh, yes, just a few comments. Um, as uh, as said, um, for uh, community health workers, we have to map for each community health worker, which are the villages where he or she works. So when we were designing our um, community health information system based in GHS2, uh, Jerry is correct, connected maybe he may add some things or Dr. Chanile. Uh, we have mapped the, all the villages of um, have facilities inside the DHIS too, so that we can attribute uh, a number of a certain number of villages to uh, a community health worker. Sometimes we are um, obliged to uh, to assign one village to many community health workers because uh, the the headcount of population is. Uh, too much for one community health worker. So we have already mapped that in our DHIS2 in Togo for uh, the community health information system. And uh, we're in, currently in discussion with uh, Côte d'Ivoire uh, for something like this, not completely like what we did in Togo, but something that is close to that. So yes, uh, and essentially when it comes to community health workers, you need to have your villages uh, mapped into the DHIS2 and per health facility catchment area. And uh, the second uh, point I wanna make is uh, for Federica, and uh, uh, she was asking if uh, for the population estimates, uh, <clears throat> uh, for example, pregnancy in a given year, we use the district or provincial 
crude uh, birth rate estimate? Uh, uh, no, we don't um, use specifically those um, crude birth estimates, but rather the second option that you have um, provided, you have the Statistic uh, National Institute that uh, have those two, those three scenarios, uh, the high scenario, the medium scenario, and the, the low scenario by provincial and district areas. So uh, by the end, uh, by the beginning of each year, they say, okay, this is what we're gonna use for the uh, estimates. So we don't make new estimates from our side, but we have the instructions direct direction from this uh, institute. And as I have said during my presentation, we have a big book over 10 years and that, and that provide us with those estimate yearly per province and per district. So they don't make a new estimate. It, uh, I have never seen that since I've been here. Maybe uh, Ganyu can say something on that, but, or maybe Samake for Mali, but they don't make a new estimate. We already have those estimates over 10 years from the result of the CGPH. So they does indicate us which estimate we choose to move forward. So those are the two comments that I can make. Um, okay, thanks. Thanks, Kofi. And I think um, you're, um, you're, um, yourself and um, Randy have responded around this um, village listing and the, this idea of facility profile. Do you want to expand on that, Jörn? Yeah, generally that is something uh, which we, we we need to find out how to to address and exactly how to deal with it in DHIST. I mean, in Lao uh, they have uh, John Lewis and company. They have uh, used uh, option sets for organizing the villages and linked villages. Then in when doing uh, case based uh, case based. Uh, Immunization uh, registry and, and other other case based uh, <coughs> case based uh, applications, and they claim to have a relatively standardized village list in in uh, in uh, in uh, Lao. They they are, they have of course problems with this spelling, and and they, one thing is that one. Uh, one ministry will have a uh, standard list that is not necessarily shared with those who are uh, telling uh, the, the registrator uh, uh, her address in this case then. Uh, so so there, are, there are challenges. And also Rwanda claims to have a standardized uh, village list. So they want to uh, link then their immunization register, I mean, each immunized child and to, to the village for thereby to be able to uh, find out <coughs> uh, I mean, where, where, uh, where the coverage is low. Yeah, so yes. So this is a very, very important and, and, uh, and, and uh, much raised uh, requirement. Yeah, over. Um, and Zafrino, do you want to um, add anything to the discussion going on there? I think one of them, um, at the issue of, you know, you mentioned kind of new districts and being able to um, uh, split those. And I know that was a question that Kofi responded um, in in the chat there in terms of um, a question for from, was it Philip um, McKay? on adding new facilities and our new areas. And I know you mentioned something about that, Seferino, in your presentation. Uh, yes, yes, uh, I, I did mention about that. Uh, what, what inside technical, what we did in DHIS2, uh, we did develop, uh, this is uh, of course, uh, is not uh, strictly linked to the, the denominator, but uh, of course, uh, what we did is uh, the, to be able to uh, allow the, uh, the the administrators. What 
uh, who knows usual DHS, the, the native, the administration was done at, at, at the central level, at the province, at national level. So uh, together with the ministry, we decided that they, they should uh, uh, create uh, the team, expand the team that are going to do the administration of certain parts of the system. So we did develop that app that is, we call decentralization module, which has two modules. One that is used by the subnational uh, administrators, and then the other one which are at national administrators. Uh, so what they can do at the at subnational is just suggesting some changes that are required in the uh, to, at the at their levels. So that if there is a, a, a district that has new health facility, so they can suggest that that health facility to be created. And then they, they, they do it in the system. We're using the module that they have. So the national level, when the, that's, that's, that this is suggested, or that facility is suggested, they receive that request. And then through that, the, the, the system, they can approve the, 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 that, that request. Once they're approved, this is automatically uh, created in DHS2. So in that way, it's possible, for example, to make sure that uh, what we have is always always up, updated because sometimes what we realized is uh, they, they, they do, uh, if you go to the visit the province, they say, no, we have requested, we have new facilities that were created, but they are not in the system. So this is also impacting on our, uh, the, 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 when, we, when, we, when we calculate the coverage is influenced by this, the, the, because you are you, uh, at the end of the day, we are counting that we have 10, 11 fa facilities, but we have 11 or 12. So that is what uh, I, I was I was um, uh, mentioning with regard to the, the how the flexibility that we have added to to make sure that uh, lower level they can also do administration of the system. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks very much, Jeffrino. Um, and Kofi, I know you have your hand up. I'll go to you now. And then there's a question in from Randy that we'll address. So Kofi. Thanks, Helen. Uh, I, I wanted to um, to come back on the master village list, which is very nice and interesting. And uh, for example, in Togo, we do have one. The challenge with that master village list is is it very very dynamic. That's something that need to be uh, keep into mind. That um, even though you have a master village list, then you can be sure that by the end of the year, you have new villages that are created or some villages that are expanded or getting integrated. So this is something that is very, very dynamic. So we need to uh, to keep that in mind when we're dealing with it um, in the DHIS2. Uh, maybe we can let Randy ask his question before because I got some element for him. Okay, <laughs> so so um, maybe if we can allow Randy to ask the question, um, if that's possible. Randy, I'm not sure if you could unmute. You should be able to now. Yep. I think so. Yeah. Yep. I think Hi, I, I think Kofi is opening it up so that he that he can he can ask you a question in return. So, can you Randy, hear me? <laughs> yes, yes, Randy, okay, please go great. ahead. Uh, very interesting discussion. Now, um, just. Uh, Looking at the uh, another piece of the denominator issue, not just the the crude numbers of population, but the the way that uh, you will select, you know, the percentage of the population that fits into a specific target group. Uh, in Rwanda, we we typically would store those percentages as constants. Uh, so you know, uh, twenty four percent of the population women of uh, of uh, reproductive age or something like that. And that, that was then applied across all districts, et cetera. Um, you know, there are a couple of issues with that, particularly because that we found that those numbers, as we went from one DHS uh, to another, those numbers changed. And if we change that constant, then all the historical data was recalculated at the new rate. So just wondering whether people had any innovative ways of, of storing those types of semi-permanent um, target population percentages uh, so that they can be applied uniformly across facilities. Jaren, you had some reply to that? 
Yeah, I know that uh, so much storing it as, as uh, percentages uh, and others are using the percentages for 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 uh, for estimate for calculating the target populations. So then they will use the typically four uh, percent for expected pregnancies across the country, whether it's uh, as a percentage in the DHIS2 or, or as a way to calculate uh, the the target population that's my experience i'm i've seen this four percent or whatever uh, percentages used across africa for that matter uh, and obviously not uh, not the optimal way of doing it and, and i see nora oh. responding yeah nora is responding on adair i don't know if nora if you want to come into the conversation if you're able to nora stoops and then i'll get back to kofi and suleiman I should be able to unmute. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, it's one of my hobby horses, uh, population denominator, and how every, uh, rephrase it, how so often it is danced around. Um, and nobody wants to take responsibility for sorting it out and actually getting it done. And, uh, you know, and because population figures are so controversial, nobody you know nobody says okay i'm putting my hand up i'm putting it in and let's start and let's go let's get going um the use of these percentages i think is very problematic because a four percent for expected antenatal deliveries or births and under one it just doesn't to me make logical sense um we also know with the census is that your population normally is broken down to under five and then we do some or some interesting mathematical calculations are done to get the smaller groups. And they sometimes really are problematic, those smaller group, um, you know, your under ones and your one-year-olds, because we need those are, are so crucial. The other thing I know is that if your org hierarchy is not set up correctly, uh, I know a country that puts its org, it's, has put its big hospitals into their own, sort of level in the org hierarchy. So when you try and calculate delivery coverage or BCG coverage, it's just a complete disaster. Mm -hmm. So there, there are many issues around population denominators. And I think we need to start looking and making suggestions about best practice. I'm sorry, I'm wandering on. Okay, Over. okay thanks, Nora. Sorry, just to um, coffee if you come back, come back. And then the last um, hand is up to Suleiman. But I think this is certainly a topic that needs to go on and continue within the community of practice and probably organize another session on. So Kofi, we only have three minutes left. So if I just hand over quickly to you and then if you can hand over to Suleiman. I think you have said it, Ellen. We need to continue that passionate yes. discussion, and then uh, that's all. That's all I can say because, as I said, as this has been said, uh, when we we come to that kind of discussion, uh, uh, this is uh, we we take days to discuss that issue, and then, for example, in in, in Togo, we 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 have decided to give the authority to the National Statistics Institute. So they, they used to come up with this kind of, uh, you can see my screen, this kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, table. Uh, and then they use the estimate from the synthetic fertility rate, uh, from the mortality, and then from migration and from urbanization. And then using that, they can come up with um, uh, this kind of scenario over the years. And then for the total of, uh, population, they can estimate uh, for the upcoming years, uh, the, the lower, the, the middle, the middle intermediate and the high level scenario for age groups and uh, for, for, for sex. And then they can uh, split that into different groups. Uh, for example, when you, age groups, when you take this kind of, so you can see uh, for each part, each portion of five years, then you can see from zero to four, from five to ten, to nine, and those kind of estimate helps a lot when it comes to discussions on the target population. So I will really support um, organizing the session on that and discuss continue discussion. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And just the last word then to Suleiman, and um, we're we're running out of time. You've only got a minute there, Suleiman.
No. Okay, but I think certainly the, I don't know, Jörn, if you want to say some concluding words on this, but really thanks for the presentation. I think just obviously with the amount of questions going on and the amount of um, movement within the chat, I think we can continue this on the community of practice, but it would be really nice to kind of document these approaches and share um, what people have done and what currently is happening. Um, so Jörn, do you want to just say a couple of words before we close? Yeah, just just that uh, this initiative we have we we, we have called it uh, facility profile, where we look at the, how to include uh, population denominators, how to include villages, etc. In, in in the DHIs, we call it facility profile, not to come into all this uh, political mess with the the more uh, I mean all the competing MFL that we have around. So. So that is an ongoing project, and we are actually experimenting with with uh, such a facility profile and and uh, village uh, listing in in Indonesia, and see how that can be linked to to the DHIS to in a, what we call a, a health facility profile. Yeah, thank you. We continue in uh, other fora. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks very much, everyone. Um, and it was great, particular thanks to Kofi and Zafrino and Arthur for really trying. Uh, I'm sorry the internet didn't allow you, um, but we certainly need to continue this conversation and look at different ways in which we can actually overcome the denominator challenge. So thank you very much and see you in the following sessions.